Hey, what's up guys? I'm Theo Joe, and today we got some big news stories you're gonna wanna hear about. The most notable one is Cloudflare, a service that millions of websites using. The most popular websites often use this, and they had a breach in security that could have put your personal information at risk. So that's the main story. But before we jump right in, I wanted to ask you guys about something. I was actually starting to think about doing daily videos. So in addition to the stuff I normally do, maybe every day talk about some smaller news stories. So that way I can talk about some interesting stuff that maybe doesn't necessarily require an entire video. So I wanna know what you guys think about me making daily videos that are slightly shorter, maybe five to six minute range, as opposed to every other day that are longer. Let me know what you think about that. So now let's get to the big story. Cloudflare is a service that a lot of websites use. If you're not familiar with what it does, it basically puts a barrier between a website and the user. And the reason for this, there's a couple of them. First of all, it provides security. So if someone wants to attack a website, well, they have to get through this firewall, essentially, so they're not accessing the website directly. And it, this protects against DDoS, denial of service attacks, that sort of thing. The website Cloudflare can absorb it for the real website. And then also for caching and speed. So this way, they have servers spread all across the world, and they cache the website or store a version of the website. So when someone in Argentina wants to access Google.com, for example, I don't know if they, I don't think they use it, but say Google server is in California, well, Cloudflare would store a version of Google in Argentina, so that way whenever someone in Argentina wants to access the website, they get a closer, faster version. So that way it doesn't have to all go to one server and overwhelm it, it just provides faster website access. And the big problem that happened recently is Cloudflare was basically incorrectly caching and returning websites to people. So if you had typed in information into a website that was using the service, it would give back that information to someone else, not you. So if you put in some super private information or you accessed your profile page, of course you would expect it to show your own information back, but it might have shown it to the wrong person. This is very similar, if not the same issue that was happening with Steam. You may have noticed over Christmas break, there was an issue with Steam. It was getting overwhelmed, and if you refreshed a page, you're potentially seeing other people's information. This is a similar thing, except it wasn't just for Steam. It was for the millions of websites that used Cloudflare. And more importantly, these cached versions were being accessed by Google over months and being stored. So you know how when you do a Google search, you can say cached version and see a previous version of a website that was cached by Google when it crawled it. That may have been showing people's personal information. So this was actually discovered by Google when they were going through and doing experiments with their own caching on their Google search engine. And they realized that these Cloudflare websites were returning personal information that they definitely should not have. So they didn't know how long it was doing this. They notified Cloudflare, and of course, Cloudflare kind of shut it down. They fixed it, and it turns out the problem was there was one character typo in the code for Cloudflare that caused it to do a buffer overflow. I'm not gonna really get into that, but basically, it was returning information that it should not have, which exposed a lot of stuff. API keys, cookies, uh, passwords, anything you can name that would have been on a website if you were looking at the private section of an account, it was there. The guy at Google who reported this to Cloudflare said he was looking at like dating websites that were having private messages shown that were just public, so it was a big issue. And like I said, these are thousands of popular websites, millions more, and I should point out this was not a hack. It's not like someone went in and breached the database and stole it. This was an error with Cloudflare's system that potentially could have exposed anyone's passwords. So it's not like someone just went in and gathered everyone's information. So it's probably unlikely that you personally were affected, but it's still possible, and who knows, maybe if a bad guy did already know about this, they might have scraped all that information, collected as much as they could, still possible, you still wanna change your passwords on any of these websites that would have been affected. Change all your passwords on those just to be safe, and this is another reason why I advocate using unique passwords, because you never know when there's gonna be a security breach. This one wasn't even a hack, it was just an error on the website's part, and this is a huge service. This, I mean, this is some of the biggest websites use this service, Cloudflare, so you can never trust anything. 
You can never trust that your password is not going to be exposed to the world and if you use that on all your websites, that's going to be a problem. All right, so that was the big story, but there's also some other news I want to talk about. Nothing as scary as that. This is just going to kind of be interesting. So the next one is that the SHA-1 hashing algorithm is officially dead. If you guys don't know what that is, it's an encryption algorithm. And what it does, along with every other hashing algorithm, is it takes any type of file and it turns it into a string of numbers and letters. And the idea is that every single unique file will produce a unique string of characters and letters. And you can't reverse it. You can't go backwards from the string of numbers and letters to the file. And say you had a huge 100 gigabyte text file and you changed one character in that file, it would produce a totally different string. And this is important in encryption because this allows you to basically prove yourself, prove that you are who you are. If you provide a certificate and then it's got the same hash as what you're expecting, well then your web browser knows that, okay, this is the real website that I'm expecting and this is secure. That's a very simplified version, but that's the basic idea. But the news in regards to it is that it was finally defeated. So a team at Google was actually able to create two different files that produced the same hash. So if you understand what I was talking about before, the, the whole point is that every unique file or certificate produces a unique string so you can prove it. But now that they know that you're able to actually produce two different files that produce the same string, that can be severely exploited and basically says you should never use this anymore because it's only a matter of time before hackers or whatever will exploit it. And they're saying, look, any websites that still use this don't anymore. You got to upgrade or else your website's going to be insecure. So you don't have to actually do anything about this. It's not your problem. It's just kind of interesting. Now, the final news story has to do with Google, a problem they were having recently that you may have experienced. And it was basically that a lot of people were getting signed out from their Google accounts and saying that their account information has been changed and you got to type in your password again. I actually saw this on my phone. I was like, what the heck is going on? Now, this turns out it was not a hack. A lot of people got worried about this. And if you did see it, you probably were yourself. But it turns out that Google just kind of made a glitch in their system. I believe what happened was this coincides with an update they made to their two-factor authentication system. So it probably just had to be reset and that's maybe why. So if you did get this error, just know that it wasn't a hack probably. I mean, you could still go to your Google settings and check logins to be sure, but this is something that a lot of people experienced, myself included. I was worried, but it's not a hack. And interestingly, people who use the Google Wi-Fi router, their routers actually went offline because apparently the Google Wi-Fi router requires you to log in with your Google account for it to work or something. So these people got kicked off the internet because their account had to be re-logged into. I don't know why they would do that. It's kind of a dumb design, but if that did happen to you, that's why. So that's it. Those are some new stories for today. I'll be back tomorrow with some more. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any suggestions, you know how to contact me on any other social media sites as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep watching, I'll put my most recent video right here. Be sure to check that out. Should be pretty interesting and also subscribe for the future news. And also consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button for notifications or else the YouTube algorithm is not gonna show you my videos anyway. So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed this video and as usual, I will see you next time, which should be tomorrow. Have a good one.